good, super quick video on how we use Jet Engine, Jet Form Builder, Google Sheets, and WordPress to essentially dynamically populate a select field within Jet Form Builder. Now, we use Google Sheets and WordPress for a lot of our infrastructure, um, and it's super, super useful. Um, however, not all of our users have access to WordPress or have training or even want to know about WordPress. Um, so asking them to update a Jet Engine glossary or asking them to update a manual input field uh, is not realistic and not feasible. So using Jet, uh, using Jet Engine, using Google Sheets is a super uh, great way to achieve that. So I'm gonna show you the end result to start with. So we've got a form here with a list of colors and we've got a Google Sheets document here with, a, with the same list. Now essentially all I wanna show you is if I add something to this list and we refresh this form, we're gonna see that value that we added to our list added here. Now, once you see that, I think it, it starts to get your brain working and think, right, okay, how useful could that be? And, and there's so many use cases here now that, that mean that you've got great data and your accuracy of your data is good. You know, you're not using a text field and you're having random entries. You've got 100% accurate. So let's talk about the how we do it. So first thing, you're gonna create yourself a new spreadsheet. And I'm just gonna call this spreadsheet cars because let's do a list of cars. So we're gonna go for car manufacturers. We're gonna go BMW, Audi, uh, let's go Honda, and a left field one, let's go Skoda. Cool, so we've got our list of cars. Um, then we're gonna head up to App Script, and there's a little bit of code to add. Um, don't panic too much, it's pretty basic. Um, a lot of it's been made by ChatGPT. So, um, First thing I want you to do is just copy your spreadsheet ID. So you're just gonna grab that here. So that's everything after D slash and before the uh, slash before edit. Open the code um, and essentially pop that in the spreadsheet ID field here. Now I'm gonna leave this as it is because the sheet name is the sheet name. But if your sheet name is different, just change that. Um, <laughs> always copy and paste as well, like the amount of times that I've added a space here and been like, why well, have I done that? Save that, copy that, and plonk it in here. Once it's in there, hit save, and then head on up, sorry, I'll just move this over a little bit, to deploy. I'm gonna head deploy, new deployment, select type, and then it's gonna be a web app, and then anyone, give it a name if you want, you can tidy this up, but I wouldn't. Obviously, if this was going live, we'd give the project a name, we'd tidy this up, but we're just going quick. First time you use this, uh, it's going to uh, ask for authorization. Um, so we're going to go authorize your account, advanced, go to project, allow, and then it's going to give us a URL. Copy that URL and you're pretty much done with your document now. So we're pretty much done with that. Now we're into the back end of WordPress. And the first thing I want to do is just go to the modules and check that REST API listings are turned on. Um, if that's not turned on, you won't be able to access this. Head on over to the REST API endpoints, new endpoint, give it a name. So let's call it cars. Paste that URL in here, pop a slash in here. Um, and then you're just gonna hit send request. And when you hit send request, if you set everything up correctly, you're gonna see that it's connected. So that's that bit done. Let's save that. So we've got cars in here. Next job is query builder. So we're gonna head on into query builder and you're gonna go to add new. Give it a name, so I have to call it cars again. And the query type, you're gonna select rest API query. And um, you're gonna register the API endpoints and cars, and then finally, we're gonna select cars from the REST API query we've selected. Hit add query, and then we're gonna take a note of the number 36. So that's gonna be our query ID number 36. Um, within the sample form, I'm just gonna give it a refresh so uh, you can access those fields. Okay, so let's look at this form that we previously set up. 
So um, this is the select field we had before. And obviously you can have multiple select fields within one form. Um, but I just want to draw your attention to this. And this is the bit that you're going to need. Um, and essentially this is the query ID, the label um, column and the value column. Um, so we're just using the same column for both. You can get a little bit more creative if you need to um, with these. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that. Um, I'm just going to delete this field so we can see the new one. Um, and then we're just going to add a new select field. Okay, so obviously we know that before the challenges we were using manual input and, and glossary, which is, you know, okay, but fiddly. Um, now we can generate dynamically. Uh, and then we're going to use get values list from jet engine query. And then in the field name column, we're going to pop in uh, the query ID. I think it was 36, wasn't it? Yeah, 36. We're going to pop that in there. And then the column header, basically. So that's going to be cars and cars. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and update. Okay, now my form's updated. So now obviously we use Elementor, but you could use whichever um, form builder, uh, sorry, whichever um, front end builder that you'd like. And now you can see we have a list of cars. We can obviously tidy this up. We can add a, a label, so we can call this cars. We can make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, we can style it, we can add columns, etc., etc. But the main point here is we can add to our list. You know, if we want to add, check my, oh, Mercedes, Mercedes. Um, if we want to add to our list, we can do, uh, and we can see that that list is updated dynamically. Um, one second, have I cached the query? That's the question. That is the question. So I've left cache query, uh, and that's probably a good thing for you to see, to be honest, um, which means obviously it loads quicker, um, but the challenge there is that my list has not been updated. So now we see the list is updated, so that's probably good for you to see. I, I skipped one of the steps there. Um, but I hope you can see how useful that is, um, and you can get really, really advanced with this um, and start to build out a set of data, a set of form submissions that give you a really accurate picture. So good luck, uh, I hope you found this useful and if you have, uh, then I'll make more videos like this. Um, it's great to kind of share knowledge um, and it's great to also um, read what other people are doing and, and, and see how it helps their small business. Thank you.